In this video, we're cutting a synthetic corundum, also a laser ruby, I guess it could be called. And this video was going to be a time lapse very briefly until I realized how boring it was. And so I was going to just show kind of these steps of going from 180 and then cutting down into forms, all stages supervised appropriately, of course. And then over the course of running through the steps, I think this is a, after 360 cutting in the main facets to a point, I started to have trouble with a thing known as orange peel, which is a common trouble with corundum and sapphires, rubies, those kind of materials, where it's kind of a modeled, polished, and non-polished mix. Here's down to 600 grit, cutting in all the facets and the girdle. And once I got down to the 1200 grit, then you can really see that orange peel starting to appear where some facets are polished, some are really opaque still, and some are kind of a mixture of the two. And so this video is then gonna be, you know, how do you get rid of orange peel in corundum or sapphire, etc. And there's really no big consensus. Some people say you go from 600 to your pre-polished lap of you know 3,000 or 8,000, and it's important to skip the 1,200 grit step. Well, I was getting trouble at 600 and 1,200, and I don't really have any other laps to work with. So here's a close-up of that, what that looks like in person, where you have almost scratches, but they're kind of like an orange peel is the appropriate way to look at it, or to consider it. And I was polishing this out with 1200 as slow, and, or as, you know, as best I could, but I was still getting a bit of, you know, pits and things left over. This may be the best I can do. Just went 1200, kind of slower, and cut down below the 600 damage, hopefully and then polished it. It took a while to polish, but it did polish up. To the right, I did cut down a little bit with my 600 new bond lap, and it started to take away the orange peel, and then I tried reversing the lap, so it went uh, counterclockwise, or what do I do, clockwise instead of clock counterclockwise, and then it put the orange peel back. So, I think I'll just have to go with this, which takes away pretty much all of it. There might be a little bit left, but it's hard to tell with my 10 times loop, so I think it'll be okay. I wound up putting this stone down just because I was so frustrated with it, and came back and just decided to power through, and what ended up working was running the polishing stage with 50,000 diamond grit after the 1200 and just running the polishing lap a little faster than I normally did. It still took a little while, but it worked well enough, and I polished a little bit of the girdle here. There are still some kind of rougher areas. Under a 10 times mag, some of the pavilion is still a little, has a couple of marks, but it's fine for this. And I was so distracted by just powering through that I forgot to record any of it or show the results. And so it's already transferred and I've cut down here on the crown side with the main facets at 42 degrees. It's still a very thick girdle, but that's just because I've been using the 180 grit centered lap that I have. Or sorry, that's a channel disc. When you use a really coarse grit like that, you wanna leave enough space from where you cut down to, to your next stages so you can get rid of subsurface damage that those coarser laps leave on your stone. So there's some, there's some tables out there of how far that damage goes down into the stone to give you a rough idea of how far you need to cut after using a coarser lap as you go down into finer grits. And here we are after cutting in with the 600 topper lap. I've got the 1200 plated up behind me and I'll move on and kind of get the pre-polish done. You can see how modeled this is right now. The 1200 will help a little bit with that, but a lot of the final work is gonna to have to be done again with the 50,000 diamond on tin. My girdle is decently thin. I'll go down a little bit more. It's still a little uneven in a couple places, but I'll patch that up 
and make it nice thin down to about half a millimeter. I wouldn't normally add those little star facets right now at this stage because they're so fine, but I couldn't remember where to cut down the table to, so I added them and then cut the table roughly to where it's gonna be in the final version. Here's the table all polished up. I'll put up a couple clips of working through it at different speeds of the lap, where starting off with the slowest lap speed that I usually do wasn't cutting it, and so I started going up faster, kind of double or maybe I'll triple the speed as I normally do, and it slowly worked out all those little orange peel spots. There may be one or two little guys in there. I don't think they'll be noticeable under to the naked eye. And now you can see the big difference between the polished face and the orange peel faces at 1200 grit. And you can see over here, the little shinier spot is a little more polished face. So there's differential hardness and polishing that goes on with this one. And then kind of opposite of that one, you can also see there's a little bit more polished, kind of that more polished, the orange peel is kind of a mix of polished and not polished surfaces. What some people do is polish the table first and then work their way down to the girdle because the you know, near table meets are the most important. If those look weird, then that's gonna be more noticeable. But what I'm gonna do, because I don't know how much I'm gonna to have to polish down or cut down on these ones to make them polished, I'll work from the girdle up and that way I can just adjust those star facets at the end if I need to make them, you know, a little bit more angled or slightly deeper in one area than the other. And that'll close it up and we'll be all set. As I'm polishing, you might wonder why it matters if I'm running this fast or slow. And that's because I'm using just water from a drip tank here and using 50,000 diamond powder or 50,000 grit diamond powder. And, you know, there's a, a few carrots in there the more water I use and the faster I spin this, the more it will just wash away the grit that I put down. And so if I go really fast, then I'm gonna run out of the grit really fast and it's gonna dry out the lap and I'll have to add more water, etc., etc. If I go too slow, then it's gonna take forever and I'm gonna get impatient and, I don't know, jam the stone down into the lap, which is soft tin. And so I have to keep this moving quite a bit in order to not just cut a groove into the lap by keeping it still. When I take off the stone, I turn it down so I don't waste grit that gets flung off because the load of the, uh, the, load of the stone on the dop can slow it down a bit. You can see it speeds up a little bit when I take it off. It's lesser at higher speeds because there's more power going to the motor. There's just one little bit that I still want to get out of this one and then I'll probably move on whether it's you know, perfect or not because the more specks there are, the more it'll look like there's dust on the stone all the time and you can't clean it off, which would get frustrating. And what I'm doing is once I start to see too much of the gray in the lap appearing, then I'll just wet my finger a little bit on the, the thing, get a little bit of diamond powder on the end of my index finger or ring finger, middle finger, whatever that is and just kind of swipe it across so you can see that kind of light powdery material is the diamond grit in there. And normally, if you can see the diamond grit, then you have probably way too much on there. But in this case, I want to overload it because it's going to get washed away relatively quickly. And I want it to cut very aggressively on this stone because corundum, which this is a synthetic corundum, will be a hardness of nine, which is very close to diamond with hardness of 10 in relative terms anyway. Well, it's not perfect, but it's done. Polished to 50,000 diamond. You can see the light just kind of dancing across the facets there. Tables all done. And there's a look down at the top. Not everything meets up where it should, but you know, we got our play of light across it and you can't really tell what it's gonna look like until it comes off the dop. So we'll do that. And this is definitely gonna be the last time I cut this stone in for a while. Although unfortunately, I do have another piece that will eventually go on the dop. Just not for a while. Here's our synthetic corundum off the dop and all cleaned up. Sparkles really nicely, although a lot of the beats don't meet up quite 
what they should, but still looks really nice. You can see the girdle's a little uneven there, but we have a nice sparkling gem, and we'll find out how much it weighs, but first I was thinking this is a corundum made for lasers. It didn't meet their standards, but I do have a 365 nanometer UV light, which when I turn it on, makes this glow a really cool red. Anyway, let's find out how much this weighs and how big it is. I measured it earlier, but I forgot. We're at about 8.1, just over 8 millimeters. And we are at 3.065 carats. <laughs> 